Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this food. Thank you for the hands that prepared it. Thank you for our kitchen workers, Lord, and for all that's going into tonight. We pray your special blessing and protection over each and every aspect of tonight. We pray that we would hear your word and do it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, did I jinx it? Bye bye. Bye bye, horse. Okay, let me go put him back and then we'll get your food, okay? Here's Jimmy. <laughs> church, uh, family, friends, and guests, thank you for choosing to spend your time with us uh, this evening. We're very happy to have you there. Just a couple of quick announcements, because I know we've got a lot going on tonight. Um, I will be in the back at the welcome table, and we are looking for volunteers. We need volunteers to do all kinds of things, like help us with CLP kids and work uh, in the shop on Saturdays. Rob, raise your hand. Rod, Rod needs help in the shop on Saturdays. Uh, we need some AVL help. Um, lots of different opportunities. We need some individuals to be on our welcome team to help greet new people. If you are interested in volunteering, please come find me at the back. I've also had a lot of people say, oh, I can't volunteer just yet. You can also volunteer to help us recruit volunteers just by telling other people um, about the opportunities that we have available. Uh, Desmond Sager is serving on our sound for tonight. Desmond, did I say your name right? Let's give it up for Desmond. Thank you, Desmond. Um, tonight, after we eat our meal, we're going to be doing a towel wrap. Um, it's after our Jesus story. We'll be blessed to do a service project. Um, we're going to wrap toiletries in plush towels to go to New Life Center, which is a refuge for individuals that have survived or are going through domestic violence and kind of see our different supplies up here uh, to get ready for that. Um, kids Choir, you're going to be dismissed. If we have anybody here for Kids Choir. Oh, she's right there in the back. Wave your hand, wave your hand. Um, right after, I'm sorry, right before the Jesus story. So right before the Jesus story, we'll dismiss you um, and you'll be able to go and have that choir practice. Uh, also, on your table, if they're not there, I will find some. There should be a little cards that you can use to invite people to the Wednesday night dinners. Everybody is welcome at dinner. Please hand those cards out. Please share them with your family, friends, neighbors. Um, if you're like me and you like to talk, strangers that you meet in the street, please just hand them one of those cards and invite them uh, to come and eat with us. And last, but definitely not least, uh, let's welcome Sarah Dorsey. Where's Sarah? There's Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Um, Sarah's going to lead us in worship for the first time uh, at the table. And she helps Pastor Chris lead worship most Sundays here at CLP. So you guys will get to hear a little bit from her shortly. Brent, please. Please sing with me. I need you guys. <laughs>
you, Desmond. Desmond rocks back there. He's got a lot of new variables tonight. Awesome. All right, folks. It's come time for the Jesus story. Ready for a Jesus story? All right, let's get out those green papers you got in front of you. We're going to keep them before us. And uh, this is the Jesus story from, from Mark's Gospel. Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 20 to 28. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to read it, but I want you to keep this phrase in mind. Um, and maybe we can take it home with us. Jesus said stuff, and he backed it up. Jesus said stuff, and he backed it up. Let's keep the Jesus story from Mark's Gospel open before us. We are rediscovering Jesus getting to know him, everybody good on sound? And getting to know him by reading Mark's gospel together every Wednesday evening. So we're going in order through Mark's gospel. In last week's Jesus story, from chapter one, Jesus began to call people to follow him. The first ones he called were two sets of Jewish brothers, Andrew and Simon, who we would later come to know as Peter after Jesus renamed him Peter, which means Rocky, and um, and then James and John, who we l later come to know as the sons of thunder. They are um, sons of a, of a father, evidently their personalities lent them to be uh, sons of thunder. Any, any sons or daughters of thunder out there? Strong personalities, people move out of your way, they're intimidated by you. Okay, you're not willing to admit it. I, I am. I, I am. When I was in when I was in college, uh, I named my intramural football team the Sons of Thunder. Okay. Anyway. Um, now, in today's story, we meet Jesus and his four new friends, who he probably knew before, but he's picking them up again, and, and he's going to a prominent town called Capernaum, on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. And it was the prominent city of the, of the day in that area. It was right on the border between Jewish territory and Gentile territory. There was a toll booth out there in the area. And that's where this guy, uh, Levi or Matthew, the tax collector, would have been working and collecting bribes before Jesus called him uh, to follow him and change his life forever. Um, in this town, in this city, it's Saturday morning. So being a Jewish town, the men enter the synagogue on the Sabbath. Here's what happens. Just follow along as, as I, in, the, in the story before you as I uh, tell it. You can see what's going on. So Jesus begins teaching, and everyone is astonished at what he says. And immediately they encounter a man comes into the synagogue who's having some extreme difficulties. In the story, we read that he has an unclean spirit. This unclean spirit challenges Jesus using the man's voice, saying, who are you? What do you have to do with us? So here, here's what I picked up from the story so far. When the gospel goes forward, Something always seems to push back. I've encountered this many times in my own ministry, as have many other pastors, missionaries, elders, deacons, and, and even priests who are healers that I've come into contact with. When this sort of thing happens, it's called a spiritual battle, also known as spiritual warfare. Jesus, with God's authority within him, and behind him challenges this evil spirit, saying to the evil spirit of the man, be quiet and come out of him. The next thing you know, the spirit leaves the man and he's back to normal, the way he had been before the spirit came into his life. Now the background for the spirit coming to his life there's likely some things that this man had gotten into that had given the devil a foothold. 
which, and giving the devil a foothold means giving the devil a stepping stone with which evil, spiritual evil, could enter the man's life. So before, um, I'm closing the door in the back. Sorry, come on, thank you. Um, before evil can come in, we need to do something to open the door. Don't be afraid, because we have, if you know Jesus, we have him inside, but you know, sometimes we open the door. Even as Christians, we've got to be careful of that. Don't give the devil a foothold, right? Now, we can't know whether the man was aware that this spirit possession could happen to him, but it did. We can't blame the man. It wasn't his fault. So the worshipers in the synagogues, in the synagogue, are amazed. This kind of stuff didn't normally happen in synagogues any more than it happens in church. They said to one another, what is this, a new teaching? For with what authority, for with authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him? Now, normally in those times, rabbis and philosophers would teach or philosophize, and their students would sit at their feet, and they'd listen and share their ideas, and then they'd talk about them, and they would debate and try to figure out what makes sense. You know, Rabbi so-and-so says this, Rabbi so-and-so says that, and so on. And you might recall, if you've read the Bible a little bit, Jesus would say things like, you've heard it said, but I say unto you. That's, you've heard the rabbi say, but I'm saying this to you, right? So he's speaking with authority. When Jesus, and G, in contrast with people who were debating amongst themselves, Jesus spoke with authority, then he backed up his words with deeds, in this case, healing the man with the unclean spirit. This is why those in the synagogue says, what is this? Meaning, a, a, a teaching plus a healing? We've never seen that before. A teacher who backs up his words with his deeds and together, the whole package together is called a new teaching, that was new. So Jesus backed up his words and deeds, combined them. His word was good for a deed. His deeds backed up his words. And in that way, we can, following that example, we can imitate Jesus, right? Okay. For us, here's the bottom line. Jesus walked his talk. I wonder what it looks like for us to walk our talk. That's a huge criticism of Christians today, that we don't walk our talk. That's why we hear of a lot of people loving Jesus, but not the church. I wonder how can we, how can we be different than Christians who don't walk their talk and, and be people who walk our talk? The story ends with a testimony. The report of him doing the talking and the walking, went out immediately everywhere into all the region of Galilee and its surrounding area. The man who was healed, evidently, told his story widely, as did the people in the synagogue who witnessed it. God did something, and they were compelled, overflowing with joy, to tell others about it. So here are the questions that are on the, um, for your table discussion, they're on your paper. And so I'd like to take a few minutes, we're giving you 10 minutes, total of 10 minutes for three questions, all right? Question one, have you ever experienced a spiritual battle? If so, what can you say about it? Number two, talk about a time when you've been disappointed when someone didn't walk their talk, or 
when you were impressed by someone who did. Third, beyond tonight's project, the towel wrap, what is one way that you individually or we as a community can back up our words with our actions? Let's take five minutes, uh, 10 minutes to talk about those things.
gracious Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to um, be your hands and feet. These towels are so much more than just um, necessities. They are little packages of love that say to someone in need, we love you, we see you, we encourage you, and we just can't wait to see what God is going to do in your lives. It's in the precious and holy name of Jesus that we put this blessing over these. Let them bless the women that receive them, the families that receive them. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Thank you Yeah. 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 Yeah.